Hello, hello. Good morning, Derek. Hello, hello. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Can you see my screen? Yeah, you're good. Oh. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, let's wait for just a few more minutes uh, for the other attendees. Thank you.
Good afternoon, everyone. Before we start, just a reminder, uh, this session is being recorded. And if you have any questions, uh, please do share them through the chat and we will try to answer them in our Q&A session. If time doesn't permit, uh, we will try to answer them offline. Welcome everyone to this webinar about managing user lifecycle and making sure your users have the right access to the right resources at the right time. My name is Derek Nidar and I'm the security strategist at IM Team. We are a team of cybersecurity professionals focused on uh, identity and access management solutions and services. I'm based in Toronto and we have offices across Canada and presence in the US and Asia Pacific. We help all sorts of organizations, public and private, realize the benefits of a true IAM solution. And we partner with various uh, IAM technology companies to help deliver IAM solutions to our customers. Uh, with me today is Jad. Uh, Jad, care to say hi and say a few words? Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Jad Dizon. I am a identity and access management specialist with IAM team specializing in identity governance. I'm glad to be here with everyone today and I look forward to the presentation. Thanks, Jad. I'll be your guide in this webinar and Jad will be showing you later how a real identity governance and administration solution actually works. With that, let's move on to our agenda. Today, we'll walk you through the common use cases for identity governance to, to demonstrate how a real identity governance and administration solution works and how it could help you enhance your current IAM program and security operations. We'll start with showing how, uh, how to improve your process, making it efficient and accurate through provisioning accounts and accesses intelligently and allowing access requests without bothering your IT department, followed by risk management through avoiding toxic combination of accesses and maintaining segregation of duties, as well as optimizing access combinations. And finally, compliance. Showing how uh, to review and retain or revoke accesses, as well as the out of the box and customizable reports in the solution. At IAM Team, we've built partnerships with various enterprise-grade technology providers. IBM is our major technology partner. And so for this webinar, we will showcase uh, the capabilities of IBM Security Verify Governance. IBM Security Verify Governance, formerly known as IBM Security Identity Governance and Intelligence, helps you in collecting and analyzing identity data to support your uh, enterprise IT and regulatory compliance. With Verify Governance, you'll uh, improve visibility into how access is being utilized, uh, prioritize compliance actions with risk-based insights, and make better decisions with clear actionable intelligence. We've implemented IBM security solutions to a number of organizations in Canada and uh, the US and we do believe that IBM Security Verify Governance has the features and capabilities to satisfy an enterprise organization's requirement on identity governance. Okay. We know that businesses rely on IT resources like cloud-based applications, enterprise applications, or internal web applications. And for a business to function properly, the right user should have access to these resources. You may have a user who needs access to these resources, while another user needs access to these. But to get these accesses, they need to go through heavily manual processes with multiple layers of approval. They need to request access uh, through the IT department, who then needs to get approval from the managers to get to these applications. While for another application, maybe they need to get the manager and the director's approval. And maybe for another different application, they need to get approval from a manager outside of their department. Now imagine this for a regular company with more than 50 or even 100 apps and resources. 
and a lot more employees and users. Because of its manual labor and uh, complexity, you encounter the first challenge, which is cost. Actors involved to finish provisioning process waste a lot of time doing these manual activities, while end users are waiting for their accesses instead of doing their actual jobs. That decreases productivity. The manual nature of uh, doing it also increases inaccuracies, leading to too much or too less access and eventually uh, requiring a redo of the whole process. And we also have uh, compliance issues uh, because when there is no centralized process of provisioning accounts and access, departments are left to handle their own. This makes it almost impossible to know what access a user has or who did what to which resource. And lastly, data risk. If you don't know who has access to what, you won't be able to control what they do with that access. This terribly increases the risk towards your crown jewels, the critical data that is vital to your business. Security policies are not enforced centrally as well. And if uh, say a user move from one role to another, their access accum accumulate even if they don't need them. Okay, I think this is the best time to take a quick poll. Um, so how many accounts and accesses do you need to provision to new employees in your organization? Is it maybe just one to five accounts and accesses? Six to 10, 11 to 20, or 20 or more? Please do take time to uh, answer the, the poll question. Okay, let's end the poll here. Yep, so it's a balance between uh, 11 to 20 or 20 or more. So I think we can we can properly say that uh, there are uh, most organizations are uh, using uh, a lot of apl uh, applications and resources and therefore you need to uh, provision uh, a lot of accounts and accesses <sighs> even for new, uh, new employees. Okay, let's move on to our next slide. Now, imagine this. Um, in a survey conducted by Ponymon Institute, 71% of users have a necessary access. In the scenario where, say, someone in your organiza organization gets hacked, uh, there is a very high chance that they have more access than they need and the attackers will be able to quickly go through your uh, most important and critical information. Uh, in the recent Ponemon Institute cost of data breach report, breaches can be categorized under three root causes, malicious attack, system glitch, and human error. And highly regulated business uh, sectors such as uh, healthcare, um, energy, and financial experience significantly higher than usual average total cost of breach. Primarily because uh, uh, breaches in these sectors result to significant business losses. And lastly, the average time to detect a breach is 280 days because uh, they are able to hide their tracks uh, so they can lurk in your environment without you even knowing it. So how can we manage the risk? Well, it's all about the right resource, the right user at the right time. What you need is the ability to control what the user has access to at any given time. To be able to know who has access to what and to know what they do with that access. You need a centralized repository of identities and access permissions. Uh, you need the ability to uh, provision and uh, deprovision accounts and access intelligently, allowing for uh, uh, revoking or uh, allowing access based on business logics. The ability to manage approvals through process workflows. And a way to manage risk 
by optimizing the best access combination, and at the same time, detecting toxic access combination. And of course, a way to audit, to be able to review user accounts and accesses, to be able to create and share reports. So these are the common components of an identity governance and administration solution. And once that's established, the IG, uh, the, basically the solution becomes uh, central in your IAM program or security operations, enabling you efficient to efficiently and accurately manage the user lifecycle. Let's take another quick poll. So how do you provision user accounts and accesses to new employees in your organization? Do you manually provision user accounts and accesses? Or do you, do you have a way to automatically provision? Okay, let's end the poll here. Okay, so I see we have uh, organizations who are manually provisioning uh, accounts. And there we also have organizations that are automatically provisioning, which is good. So I guess for the organizations that are man manually provisioning it, uh, it's a tough job for IT, especially if you have, uh, again, a lot of uh, applications and as well as uh, a lot of users in your organization. Okay. So let's see this uh, solution in action. Uh, but before we do that, let's just have an overview of our demo environment. As mentioned earlier, uh, we will be using IBM Security Verify Governance, which is central in this solution. Uh, in our demo, we have a fictitious uh, company, uh, Gaulu Corporation, that is using Verify Governance to govern user identities in their organization. You'll be introduced to various actors, uh, a new end user, a request approver, and an administrator, all using IBM Security Verify Governance to provision accounts, request and uh, approve um, uh, additional access, optimize roles, run certification campaigns, and uh, check out reports. Now, in this demo, our target systems are um, Active Directory, uh, we have Salesforce, and we have IBM Security Verify Access. So let's go to our first scenario, uh, automatic provisioning in user onboarding. Now, as I mentioned earlier, provisioning accounts and accesses to new employees uh, is a gruesome process, especially if it's manually done. You have to go to a lot of interfaces, seek uh, approval from uh, a lot of people. It's prone to human error and uh, really would take a lot of time to do. Now in this demonstration, we'll show you how IBM Security Verify Governance can connect uh, with HR management systems to automate the onboarding uh, process and provision accounts uh, and accesses to target the systems uh, based on uh, the business logic. We will create the user in the HR system and Verify Governance will capture it and create the identity and uh, provision accounts and access to target systems. Great, let's jump right into it. So as you'll see on screen, the HR system that we are using for today is Orange HRM. So let's create our new user. And before we do continue the creation, let's confirm that the user does not exist in any of the applications or verify governance. So let's do a quick search on Kramer here. As you can see, the user does not exist. If we go to Active Directory, we search on the current domain. And last but not least, we have Salesforce. Okay, so now let's create the user. So we have Sarah Kramer here. And as the HR administrator, 
I would input the username and the assigned job that the user is assigned to. Great, so this custom connector reads the HR system periodically, and this would vary per client on how often users are onboarded within the company. In this time period, the connector would recognize which users to add or modify into Verify Governance. Additionally, Verify Governance can be configured to be able to update specific user attributes based on business logic. A simple example is based on, based on the job end date inputted from HR, we can have Verify Governance update the user's attribute to be suspended or restored. Now let's navigate back to Access Governance Core. And specifically we have the Access Governance Core module. And then we can do a search for our user. Great, as you can see, the user is created. The username was captured, the first name, the last name, and the job title assigned to the user on creation. Great, now that the user is created, let's try accessing one of the applications the user is entitled to. So the first application that we have here is our Gaolu Apps homepage. So on this homepage here, the user can have access to his profile and specific applications that the company has access to. So let's input the user ID and the default password assigned to the user. Great, now that we are able to log in, in this demo environment, we have Verify Access configured to grant user multi-factor authentication through the IPM Verify app and you'll see that on the right side of the screen here. This app can be downloaded in the Play Store or the App Store. So if we do try to access Service Center, as you'll see, uh, the authentication is denied because we have not set up multi-factor authentication. So let's close this and let's quickly set up the device. So under device management, I'll add a new device. And on the mobile here, I will just can be QR code. And there you go. Now that the device has been registered, we can now access Service Center. If I do a refresh on the mobile here, you'll notice a pending request. Okay, and I'll just click Approve. And there you go. So now, since this is the first time that the user is trying to access Service Center, uh, we're, we need to provide consent. So I will permit that access and we can now log into Service Center. Now, since I do have a default password set, I would have to reset my password here. Now, once I change my password, it syncs this password through all the entitled accounts of the user. The great thing about this dashboard is the user can see all the accounts that they have. So we have Active Directory, Verify Access, and Salesforce Cloud. We do also have the entitlements, such as the Accounting and Finance AD Group memberships and default entitlements for Verify Access. Great, now let's view the other applications of the user. So if we navigate back to Active Directory, we'll just refresh this. And if we search the domain again, we can see that the user has been created. And if we navigate to Salesforce, we do search our user and the user has been created as well. 
So this is verified governance automatically provision, provisioning access based on the job role. Okay, thank you, Jed. Uh, just one thing to point out. Um, we use Orange HRM as the source uh, of identity for this example, uh, but we can also utilize other HR systems. Uh, there are uh, out-of-the-box ad adapters to allow uh, IBM to connect to some of the more popular applications out there. But if your organi organization uh, does not use an HR system, uh, you can directly update uh, um, your uh, applications through uh, Verify Governance. So you, you can use Verify Governance as the source. Uh, with this, uh, you just directly add or remove identities in uh, ver uh, Verify Governance, and that will reflect in Active Directory and the other applications. Okay, so with that, let's head on over to our next scenario, self-service access request. Uh, so there are times when users need additional access to, re uh, to resources uh, to be able to do their tasks. So uh, we know that if this is done traditionally, it takes a lot of time just to get this done. Um, time that would have been uh, better spent for value adding activities, say for IT admins and the end user. Now in this scenario, we'll show you how uh, quickly a user can request access on his own and get that access uh, he needs to do his task. So here, uh, the new user will uh, request uh, access and the manager will be notified for approval. And once approved, uh, the access will be provisioned. Great, so currently we are still logged in I was, as our end user here, Sarah Kramer. So Verified Governance Service Center is, we can just simply request that additional access. We navigate to the menu and click on Request Center. So let's say a few months from now, uh, this user requires additional access to application one, which is a Active Directory group membership. So this user can do that by clicking on the permissions. Once they do select a list of applications that the user is allowed to select from, so we click on Active Directory target. And let's search for application one. And there you go. So let's add this to the request. Now, once this request is sent, the manager gets notified and they can approve or reject this request. Let's add additional notes here. And submit. Okay, so I think this is the best time to take another poll. Um... How are access requests managed in your organization? Uh, are this sent to the IT department who then works on the request uh, through self-service feature like this one, or you don't know? Okay, so let's end the poll here. Okay, so I think the majority, uh, the re for the majority, the request is sent to the IT department. Uh, so I guess with this, uh, your IT department is very busy in handling all those requests, especially if you are in a large organization. Okay. Uh, So a good thing to note on Verify Governance Service Center here is that the user could view the request that was sent. So as you notice here, the role assigned is authorizable. All that means is the manager hasn't acted upon the request yet. And under the entitlements, the application one hasn't been automatically provisioned to the user yet. So now let's navigate to the manager's email and view this request. So before the email is retrieved, this is the manager service center. As you can see, the dashboard is very different from what we see from the end user. And this is definitely a customizable feature in Verify Governance Service Center.
as we can see here, we got a notification that a request is being authorized. If we look closer to it, we can see the request ID and the status of this request. Navigating back to the manager's page here, as we can see, it's Mark Taylor or M Taylor. If we go to the request center, and from this point, he'd like to manage his users. As you can see, we have the request ID of 193. From this request, we can see the permissions that they are requesting access for, the comments, and all the information on the user. So as the direct manager of this user, the manager could approve, reject, or redirect this request. So let's quickly approve this request. Great, now that the request is approved, let's quickly go back to the end user. We'll notice here the end user, Sarah Kramer. So if we refresh the dashboard, we can see that the role assignment has been performed and application one has been automatically provisioned. Thank you, Jed. Uh, with that, let's head over to our next scenario, which is segregation of duties. There are times when certain access combinations are deemed toxic as they are against uh, security policies. An example would be, say, uh, being able to create purchase orders and at the same time, uh, being able to approve and issue vendor payments. Now, through Verify Governance, we can detect this toxic combinations and flag us immediately so that we can stop it even before we provision the accesses. So in this scenario, we see how the new user will try to request for a, uh, for a permission, but since it violates uh, SOD, an alert would be generated and the provisioning would be halted, stopped. Great, thank you, Derek. So on screen right now, we are still logged in as our end user, Sarah Kramer. So in this environment, we have configured a high risk uh, segregation of duty violation, wherein a user at any point in time cannot have this access, disbursement request, and disbursement approval. If that does happen, that becomes a violation. And what we're gonna try and do now is have Sarah request disbursement approval and this request would be blocked. So on the request center, under the same page, you select Active Directory, and here's the request here, disbursement approval. So if we click on this request, you'll notice that it says the request is blocked. Your, present, your, your request presents a high risk situation, and as per corporate policies, it's not allowed. So the current selection is removed from cart. Unlike the scenario we saw a while ago, where we were able to submit the request for review and add additional notes for the manager to see, in this case, we could not do any of those. Hence, the request is not sent to the manager at all, and they are not notified of this. Okay, thank you, Jed. So with that, let's head on over to our next scenario, which is optimizing roles. Now, most of the time you have a lot of accesses uh, or permissions or entitlements that are scattered, manually given to a lot of users due to one reason or another. Now, wouldn't it be nice for your system to identify if accesses can be grouped accordingly and optimized as a rule? Now, in the next scenario, uh, Verify Governance would, uh, would be able to mine data to create a better uh, grouping of permissions and roles. So currently, we are logged in as the Verify Governance Administrator. As you can see, there are a few modules here that, he has, that we have access to, but what we want to focus on is the Access Optimizer. Now, under Access Optimizer, uh, we navigate to Manage and Role Mining. From this point, we create a role mining task. We can leave all these attributes to default and let this task run. So with Verify Governance Role Mining, uh, it takes a snapshot of the current user data set and their assigned permissions. 
With this, it creates a heat map to suggest a new role based on the, num based on the number of users and their assigned permissions. Now, this heat map or these suggestions of roles could be used by the organization to better identify if they are under provisioning access or over provisioning access. Now that the task is complete, these are the roles that Verify Governance suggests to make. And if you click on map, you can actually see a heat map of the users and the permissions. Now let's click on role 18. In role 18, we can see that it, these users have a core set of permissions. Sure, other users have extra permissions, but these is what they all have in common. And for this demonstration, we actually used role 18 and renamed it to accounts payable staff. If you recall during the provisioning of our end user, these, these permissions, which is disbursement requests, finance and accounting are provisioned to the user. So let's quickly navigate back to our end user here. As we can see, Sarah Kramer, we have accounting, finance and disbursement requests. So at this point, Verify Governance identified that this user is part of a specific job role and automatically provisioned the accounts and accesses for this user. Thank you, Jed. Let's head on over to our next scenario, which is certification campaign. Now it is important to be able to periodically review the accumulated accesses of users to check if those are still needed by the user. Uh, then we can uh, retain or revoke the accesses depending on the business requirement. Now, Verify Governance has the certification campaign feature, which allows managers or other set of users to review accesses of other users uh, and revoke or retain them as necessary. Uh, in this scenario, um, an admin will be launching a campaign which would require the managers to review the accesses of his employees, uh, allowing him to revoke or retain the access. Great. So the Verify Governance Administrator could launch a campaign periodically. And each campaign can be customized to review a user's permission, account, or any violations they do have at that moment. So now we are logged in back as Mark Taylor, the manager. And if we navigate to the access certification feature in Service Center, we can see the first request here. So these are all of the users that are assigned to Mark Taylor. And if we look for our user here, S. Kramer here. Now, let's say once the campaign was launched, um, it's been a few months and Sarah Kramer no longer needs application one access. So in this campaign, as the manager, I could just click on revoke and sign off this specific permission. Now, what the sign off does, it notifies Verify Governance to act upon this request. So if we go back to the users, we can see that Sarah's action item, um, the manager has acted a one of seven entitlements of Sarah. And as the manager, we set this manager up to be the reviewer of the campaign. And he can review each manager and the status and if he does need to follow up on any of them. So I'll quickly navigate back to the end user here. So we have Sarah Kramer. And if we do a quick refresh, we'll notice that application one is no longer a part of the entitlements. Okay, thank you, Jed. Let's head on over to our last scenario, which is reporting. Reports are important, especially in reviewing and auditing uh, certain information in the system. Uh, Verify Governance has out-of-the-box reports available, and Jed will be showing us an example of this in his demonstration. Uh, now, uh, do take note that uh, reports can be generated and shared to other users. 
Great. So now we are logged in as Mark Taylor, the manager. And depending on the access that the administrator provided, not all people would have access to these reports. So on the reports, what I would like to see is all the users that are assigned to me and any of them that have a risk or a violation. To do that, I would click on policies, violations, and user risk and mitigation. Great, so we can go through the report. Um, we'll set the scope as default and we'll set the file format here. As you'll notice, we can also run the report and schedule. So the great thing in verified governance is that the backend is a database and it can either be DB2 or Oracle. Nonetheless, the reports that can be made are flexible and simple to create. There are also other, other out-of-the-box reports that will be useful based on the use case. A good example is generating a report to view all the entitlements of the user at any point in time. So if you do a refresh here, the report is completed. And in this report here, We can see the date timestamp, a quick summary on what the report is about, the scope of the report, number of records in the report. So we'll notice here that a chatman, the user that's assigned to Mark Taylor, has a violation called disbursement conflict with a high severity risk. And what makes it a SOD is the disbursement approval and disbursement request. Now the user did not request this, but we've prepared it for our demonstration to show you how an SOD would appear in the report. Back to you there. Okay, thank you, Jed. Uh, and that is the last scenario in our demonstration. Um, if you are interested, uh, we're here to help. We are offering IG Quick Start, uh, which allows you to utilize an identity governance solution in your environment at no cost. It is more than just a trial uh, because on top of the technology, you will uh, receive professional services from us to set up and configure the technology to allow uh, standard features like accounts and access provisioning to standard target systems. So if you are thinking of setting up an identity governance and administration in your environment, but you are not sure where or how to start, uh, just contact us and let's chat. You can visit our website. Uh, the URL is shown in the screen or you can email uh, uh, us at info at imteam.com. Now, just to summarize, uh, we showed how an identity governance uh, solution can efficiently and accurately uh, provision accounts through intelligent provisioning and self-service access requests, uh, how it manages risks by uh, ensuring uh, segregation of duties is followed and it can optimize roles as well, and how it supports compliance with the certification campaign and reporting features. Uh, and with that, let's move to our question and answer portion. Okay, let me just check here for uh, questions. Um, okay, we have a question here. Uh, we require different level of approvals for certain uh, access requests. Uh, can this be reflected in the solution? Uh, yes, uh, uh, workflows can be modified so that um, uh, if you need uh, a uh, different levels of approvals, say you have uh, a manager first to approve and a director, uh, we can surely uh, modify the workflows to reflect that uh, uh, different level of approvals required. Okay.
Okay, let's see another question. Uh, we have a lot of resources, but uh, we don't know if IBM has ways to connect to them. Um, does this mean this solution cannot work with our resources? Sure, I can take that, Eric. So IBM has a whole list of supported adapters, be it mainframe or application-based or even cloud-based. Now, if it does not fall under that list of adapters, we can definitely develop a custom adapter so that Verify Governance could read that application and record all the accounts and permissions into Verify Governance. Okay, thank, thank you, Jed. Okay, so we have another question. Um, uh, can a request that may uh, violate SOD still push through? Sure. So the demo that we showed a while ago, the segregation of duty was a high risk violation. And we can definitely configure SODs with different risks. Uh, for example, we can configure an SOD with a low risk where the user could still see that it's a violation, proceed with the request, and once it does reach the manager, um, it still has to go through an approval, but they could see those notes as well. Oh, okay, thank you, thank you, Jed. So yeah, I think that's all the time we have. Uh, thank you everyone for joining our webinar. Uh, stay safe and have a great day.